Well, good morning. Oh, I love that. Y'all know I'm going to ask us to stand, and you're already standing. Well, welcome to Grace. We're so glad you're here. We have a really special service in store for you today. We're going to hear from a guest speaker about something really incredible happening in another part of the world. But before we get there, I know we're all eager to hear about that. But can we just uh, sing some songs first? Are y'all good with that this morning? If you say no, it's still going to happen. But we're so glad to be here. We hope you're doing amazing. It is a gorgeous day outside. It's a gorgeous day to worship the Lord. So let's sing together. has taken over for us, that he fights everything for us, he's brought us into freedom, yeah? Now I will not forget you, no. Know. 
introduced last week, and we love singing it together, so we're going to lift this up to the Lord today. I think that's something that a lot of us can relate to. It might not feel like that on surface level, though. That might be something we have to think about. Yeah, you know, I do like feeling known. I do like feeling recognized. I like feeling that I'm validated and that I am someone that's contributing, someone that is seen, someone that is heard. And we always matter to our Lord. So can we sing this one more time in just a state of rejoicing 
a state of triumph because our Father has won these victories for us. Let's sing this. With love's arms around me, I'm finally home. There's no better feeling than being known. Always good and always kind. This is what my Father's like. He runs with a bandit. Father, we are so grateful that you reveal yourself to us in ways that we need to know that we are loved. We need to know, Lord, that we are valued and that we are heard. We are so grateful, God, that we, we did not come into this world having any power and any authority to choose the God who is. But we are so grateful that the God that we've come to know is the God of our Lord Jesus Christ who revealed himself as always good, always kind. Father, we pray that you would use this message in our hearts of what you're transforming our lives to become in order that we can help others who don't know this, Father, to come to know your heart. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, Grace Church. My name is Rick Thompson, and I'm the pastor here. And we've got a, an incredible opportunity as a church in our generation, in the times in which we're living, in order to, to, to take that very message that all people matter to God and to do everything we can to help connect people who may not know that, that, that there is a God who loves them. Just this week, I was going into the bike shop to get my bike uh, uh, worked on. Uh, Raleigh Faust, a uh, Grace member, a partner here, he owns a bike shop called Chain Reaction. He's got a guy named Ben who is uh, uh, working things, uh, running things there. And as I brought the bike in, uh, Ben said, hey, how was your week? And I said, oh, it's, been, it's been good. Uh, it's been stressful, but it's been good. He goes, yeah, I get that. And he said, what do you do, by the way? What do you do for a living? And he didn't know I was a pastor. And I said, Ben, I'm a, I'm a pastor. And, uh, and I remember thinking as a kid that pastors only work on Sundays, right? I mean, what else is there to do if you're a pastor? And he laughed about that. But it opened up this conversation where he said, is that something you always wanted to do when you were a kid? And I said, no, honestly, I did not want to be a pastor. And I, it gave me the opportunity to share my story of how I came to faith in Christ. I was 16, and I said, Ben, when I did, um, everything changed. Because I thought I knew that there was a God and what we're supposed to do in order to live our lives on the straight and narrow and all that. But he blew all that out of the water. He, he's real. And I didn't, I, I guess I knew that, but I didn't feel that. And this just led to the conversation to say, I, I, my heart is for people who have hang-ups. My heart is for people out in the community or the world who won't come to church. And so I told God, no, I don't want to be a pastor. You're stuck with Christians. And, and somebody's got to do that. God bless them, you know. But, but I wanted to be out there for the people. And so God wanted, I said, God, I want to do mission work. God, I want to do youth ministry work. I want to work with college students. God, I want to do. And God said, listen, you can do all of that if you will be a pastor. I said, like, really? And so he's made me a pastor. And we laughed about that. But when I left, I thought, wow, that was an answer to prayer. Because this last Sunday, if you recall, we prayed for divine appointments, that God would give us conversations with people in our community about this Father, this Father who just wrecks everything with his love and his grace. We're going to do that this morning. You're going to hear uh, from, from a fella that I, I love his heart, the heart of him and his wife, and what they're doing in another part of the world. And I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm going to let him come and share that in just a minute. But I do want you to know that we are starting as a church, we're in transition, starting to become an independent congregation. Grace at Fort Clark United Methodist Church is now going to be, starting in June, June 1st, Grace at Fort Clark Church. Yesterday, the Florida Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church got together, over a thousand people on a Zoom call, and our bishop, uh, Tom Berlin, led a very respectful, 
very uplifting and unifying uh, meeting because there were 55 churches that had voted, like, like our church did, to disaffiliate from the denomination in order to stay true to our, our mission. And at the end of the day, out of 1,000 and, I think it was 1,071, so 1,071, 1,091, 1,091, okay, 93%, over 1,000 voted to let these churches disaffiliate. And in Pastor Berlin's prayer, I, I really appreciated this. He said, in the book of Acts, we know that there were times when the church moved together uh, on the same page, doing the same thing, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4. And there were times, and that was hard because they were bringing in Gentiles into what was a Jewish movement. And that's really hard to, to make that work together. But there were also times in the book of Acts where they decided to split forces and go in different directions. And Paul and Barnabas had a falling out at one point. And that, in, as you look back on that, it took the gospel into areas it would not have gone. And by the end of the account, they did come back together. They, they were walking in the same uh, path. And so we want to pray for our church. We want to pray for all of the churches. We want to pray for the United Methodist Church because we are on the same team. We're on the same team with the Baptist Church across the street, the Lutheran Church, the Presbyterian Church. We're all on the same team reaching people with the Father's heart, the Father's love. And so before we go further in the service, I want to call us to a couple of minutes of prayer, and I'm going to call on you all to pray, for all of us to pray. And it's going to get uncomfortable, especially if you're an introvert, all right? I'm just going to be straight up about that. We're going to take about two minutes, and we're going to ask you just to circle around with the people right next to you. And I want us to pray for the church. It'll be a, a symphony of prayer, okay? Because we'll hear prayers going on all over the place. And there are some prayer points I want to put up on the screen here for us to lift up as we move forward as a church and as we do so praying for other churches, including the United Methodist Church. And then after a couple of minutes, I'll close us together in prayer and we'll keep on going in our service. Would you take time right now to turn to a couple of people around you and let's pray.
Father, we're so grateful that you call us to be a people of prayer. We pray, Father, because this is a house of prayer for the nations. And we know that the nations are on your heart. People who, who are living far from you and far from the knowledge and the experience of who you are. But every single person, every single person, Lord, is on your heart. And so we pray that you would put them on our hearts and that the people that are in our communities, people in our circles, would be the very ones that you, you give us divine appointments with and conversations that come from the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit promptings to open our mouth and know that you are going to give us words. And more than that, you're going to give us hearts so that people will be drawn to your son Jesus. So, Lord, we want to make much of Jesus. We want to lift him high and pray that you would teach us to do so, to equip us to do so, and to help us to do that with one another, to equip and, and train and disciple each other in this church. And we pray that you would add to our numbers day by day those being saved and that you would do that for all of the churches in Gainesville, all of those who are lifting high the name of Jesus, who are standing on your word of truth and grace and are seeking to live in humility but by the power of God to become all that you are transforming us to become, to become like your son, Jesus. We will give you all the praise. We will give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness, not only in a worship service, but throughout the weeks, throughout the days of each week, praying and, and lifting up one another. When you learn of a need, you learn that somebody's going through something really difficult, really challenging, that you are there interceding for them. And so God is answering his prayers. He's showing up in ways that he doesn't so much if people aren't praying. If we're not connecting and bringing God into the equation, uh, he, he, he reserves, you know, he, he sits back and puts on our hearts, I want you to invite me. I want you to invite me into your lives. We're going to continue worshiping. And uh, one of the ways that we do that is by giving to God his tithes and offerings. And so I'm going to ask the ushers, if you'll come forward at this time, we'll pray. Uh, not everybody gives in the offering plate. Some give online and some do automatic giving and text to give, all of that sort of thing. And, and that's, that's awesome. And we're so grateful for your faithfulness in giving to, to what God is doing. Um, in the seat back in front of you, there's a card that says Welcome to Grace or Connect card, something like that. And here's a way to communicate with us if there's, uh, you have a question about how to get involved with life groups or be part of Partners in Ministry or, or Children's Ministry, anything like that at all, missions group trips. Just put that on there that you, and we'll get back in touch with you. If you have a prayer need, please put that on there so that we can pray for you. Uh, you can check, hey, this is anonymous. I just want the pastor and the staff to pray. Otherwise, we have hundreds of people that we will give this to so that they can pray along with us for these needs. Would you join me in praying? God, again, we, we really believe in you and the power of prayer. And so we pray that you will, you will take these gifts and you will find innovative, creative ways of sending us out and sending the message out to, to Gainesville, Florida into the state of Florida, into this great nation, and into the world. And we pray that you would bring people to know Jesus. Father, we pray that you would bless each and every one who gives whatever we can give, that you would bless us uh, as we consecrate ourselves for your service. And we thank you that we can be a part of what you're doing in the earth. In Christ's name, amen.
night will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice Thank you so much for this morning, for this church body, for those watching online, God. We just pray that we can experience you today in a new way, in a different way. And God, like we prayed for those encounters that we're going to have this week, truly, God, let us share your love from the inside out. It's not just a show. It's not just something we do. We don't just come to church on Sunday morning. But we are changed inside because of you. And maybe we don't even need to use words to share you. Maybe somebody's going to ask us, what do you have that I don't have? What do you have that I need? I want what you have. And it's you, Jesus. 
It's you inside of us in our hearts and in our minds. And we praise you for that. We thank you for that. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Back in January, um, Sira Botes invited me and, and Taylor uh, to go to coffee down here in Tioga to meet Richard Botez's cousin, uh, a lady named Liesel Pienar. And Liesel's from South Africa, but she and her husband Arthur are ministers or missionaries in Zambia. And I'm going to let uh, Richard tell us about Arthur because we learned when we were at that coffee about the work that God is doing. And it's more than just a work. It, there are certain things that you become aware of that God's doing, and you're like, wow, we have got to travel together because God is just doing a beautiful and a powerful work there uh, that I think he wants to do everywhere. And so uh, she said, my husband Arthur will be in the States in April. And I said, is there any way that he could come to Grace and share, uh, share a message, but also what God is doing in, in Zambia? And so, Richard, why don't you introduce Arthur to us this morning? Good morning, Grace. Um, I'm actually glad to introduce my family member now. He's married to my, my younger cousin. Um, they were led to become missionaries uh, 25 years ago, and they were um, going to Zambia initially with um, Vision Africa for 10 years, and then after that they, they joined Overland Missions, which is a missions agency he's involved with right now, um, for the past 15 years. But um, So uh, Arthur, Arthur studied engineering initially, um, and then he got called by God to become a missionary, and, and in the meantime, in the, in between time, he did um, a doctorate in ministry as well, and um, they're also responsible for the pastoral care, um, and he'll tell us more about Liesel is, is, an, is, a, is a teacher, trained teacher, so she have a heart for the children's ministry. Um, so, and I'm just glad to introduce, and, and, and Arthur will tell you guys more about what they've been doing in Africa. Thank you. Am I on? Good. Yeah, it's such an honor to be here with all of you this morning. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but um, your, your church actually gave towards a mission trip that happened this week in Africa, um, where 24 of our kids' ministry, well, they are just members of kids' ministry, and every year we have an expedition, and the kids really stand in line to go on this expedition because they get to practice what they have been, been hearing and to give what they have been receiving throughout the year. We've, we've been having revival in, on our property. We have a big pavilion um, where, where about 400 kids meet every Saturday. And during the presence time, these kids get a download from God where very often after the service, well, it's not a really a service, it's more like a time of coming together and ministry and singing and doing skits and everything, but they get the meat of God's Word. But when God touches them, it so affects their lives that the kids stay there. Um, they start at nine. Sometimes one, two o'clock, they are still there because they're enjoying God's presence. Sometimes they go to someone's house and God continues to minister to them. Because these kids in Zambia, they, they, in their culture, until you bring a contribution, you make a contribution to the household by helping or by bringing income, you know, you don't really have that much value or a voice. Um, it's very common for three kids to sleep on a single bed mattress if they have a mattress. And so these kids grow up with very little. Um, most of the times, we'll show a video when they have their shirt on. Many of them cried because they've never had a new shirt. Most of the clothes they get from what we call DAP or Goodwill, you buy these big bundles of clothes, and it's great quality clothes donated from all over the world. And that's the only clothes that they know. So these kids come from very humble beginnings, and they don't have a lot of value in the eyes of the older society, but when God touches them, 
they realize how much God values them and what He sees when He looks at them. And so this really becomes an expression. It's almost like they find meaning and purpose in life. And so when they go on an expedition, um, they, they actually minister not to children, they minister to adults. They go from house to house, village to village. They ask if anyone is sick, and then they pray for them. They lay hands on them. And because they are preaching the meat of God's word, God confirms that they are representing him by healing the people that they pray for. So we have a short video of the expedition that finished Friday um, to show you about what the kids do.
So that was this week. And you know, what, what does it take for a kid who is culturally still insignificant to become a powerful minister of the gospel? You know, it, it's not about knowing more about God. It's about having an encounter where God becomes real to you, where He becomes your life, where you begin to see yourself not by the opinion of people around me, around you, which we would call our personality, our, our personal uh, perception of ourselves, but when God shows you what He has made you to be, what He sees when He looks at you, what He placed within you when Jesus died as you, and you believe that He didn't just die for the world out there, but He who knew no sin became sin, and because of that, I become the righteousness of God in Christ. When someone's life is transformed, it changes everything. Life begins. You know, and I can give a testimony of my own life. I was, I, I went to a church where I was confirmed at the age of 16. I went through all the classes and I, and I knew all about God, but I didn't experience Him. And so I went to a life of drinking and smoking marijuana up to the age of 21 years old where um, I had severe ADD and I, I was undiagnosed and unmedicated. And so I used marijuana to help me focus and drinking to help me focus um, and also to, as a painkiller because my lifestyle and the way I saw myself was really... It was really painful for me. Um, so when I was 21 years old, I came to the, a point in my life where I no longer um, saw any value of my, in my life. I had no meaning. It felt like, why did God create me if I just exist? And I actually even doubted that He really exists. And so I had, a, I had an appointment to basically, sorry, to inject heroin um, on, on the Friday. And this was the Wednesday evening in my room. And I said, Lord, I know that I am busy destroying my life. I knew I wouldn't last up to the age of 30. And I said, Lord, if you are real, if all these things that I heard about you in church is real, can you show me that you are real? Because if you are real, I know that you are the only one that can take me out of this dark pit that I find myself in. And, um, and you know, like I said, the reason why I was using all of this was that it was a painkiller because life had become so painful and I had nothing to live for. On the out, on the out, that was on the inside. On the outside, I was doing amazing. I was academic achiever of the year, apprentice of the year. I ran a sub three hour marathon. I was doing very well. I got a scholarship to go and study engineering. But inside, I felt like, what's the, what's the point? What's the point of it all? And then God appeared to me in my room. I was alone. And the, and the first thing I experienced was I felt loved, like, like there was always this hole in my heart. And the only way I could fill this hole was when I loved God with everything that is within me. When I give all of myself in loving a person, and I used to find people that were rejected by others, and I would, show, and I would encourage them, and I would love them. And then I felt like alive. I would rescue people, but then when they were rescued and they, they were out of their problems and they didn't need me anymore, I lost my purpose again and, and I would get hurt again. And so when the Lord appeared in my room, I felt so completely loved. Everything that I saw, I saw through different eyes. It's almost like I was looking through the eyes of God and my room, which was messy, everything seemed beautiful. I was listening to a cassette that my girlfriend wanted me to listen to, Paula Abdul, Shut Up and Dance. And I don't like, that was not my kind of music, but she said, no, you should listen to it. But then through the lyrics of those music, God talk, talked about, he answered questions that I haven't even verbalized. He said, he knew exactly my heart. He knew exactly what my life should be about. And he spoke to me, and right there, I I. I I had a pipe that I used to smoke with. I crushed that. I, I flushed all the marijuana I had into the, into the toilet. And I said, Lord, you are real. And, and, I, and I give my life for you. 
And so that began a, a transformation in me. I went on and I, and I finished my degree at the University of Cape Town in electrical, mechanical, and electronic engineering. And um, I was actually wanting to go to the Amazon and give my life on missions. But with Campus Crusade, for you to be a student leader, uh, I was director for the students in, in, in ministry of Campus Crusade on the campus. Um, you have to finish your degree. So in the time of finishing my degree, I realized, you know, I was too rough. I'm not the pastoral kind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to become a director of the company, a petrochemical company in Sasselberg where we produce, we, we extract oil from coal and we produce petrochemicals there. I was going to become a director, so I studied, started studying BCom. And then during that time, the Lord says, you've got your ladder against the wrong wall. You don't see what I see when I look at you. I see a minister. But, you know, as, as a child, even until I, I, was, I did two years of national service, I had a very severe stutter. I couldn't speak. I chose to become an engineer so that I wouldn't have to speak in front of people or to minister to people. And, and so I didn't want to do that. But the Lord says, will you trust me? Will you trust me in what I see? And so we did. And um, I resigned from my work and I started studying BA theology, and that started a journey where God ministered to me. I would say for the first 16 years of ministry, I did very little for him. He, because God wasn't building my ministry. He was building me. He was making me into the man that he saw when he looked at me. And so, to me, God is not someone distant. He is in me. He is with me. I feel His presence. He gave my life meaning. He took away my pain by loving me completely in the way that I could never even have thought was possible. And He showed me the value of an individual, which is why I could live my potential life of being wealthy and go to a country without support where we barely had enough food to eat and I could begin to supposedly minister to others, but really God was ministering to me. Until now, when, when I know Him, He's not a God out there. He's the God in here that wants expression. He wants to use my life to express who He is through me to others. And this is the kind of God that we, that, that we preach. And this is the kind of God that we introduce these children to. And when they have an encounter with him, it's, it's real. Imagine you're in a culture where you, have, you are very insignificant, really, because of your age, until you become educated and you're able to bring an income into the family, then you get status. A lot of them never even get good clothes. They walk around with holes in the clothes because they're not yet significant. When they become significant, then they get better clothes. But then these kids get touched by God. And God starts working through them. Now, these kids go into the villages, and the miracles that they do, is, it's, it's unbelievable, done by faith. Two, there were kids from two, two or three kids, seven to 11 years old, that, that went and prayed for a teacher who got meningitis, and when they tried to do the injection in his spinal cord, they messed it up, and he was almost paralyzed. And he was, he was unfit for work, and he had tremendous pain. So as my wife was doing a kids' ministry training in Mulebezi in Zambia, these little kids got around him and prayed for him. And God healed him right there on the spot with these little kids, and he couldn't believe it. And he was running around and saying, God healed me, God healed me. And um, a few days later, there was another lady who was so sick, she hasn't been able to get out of bed for three days. And, and because she knew him to be a man of God, she invited him over to pray for her. And when he came there, he says, let me get, you, get my kids to pray for you. And the lady was really annoyed and says, you know, if you don't want to pray for me, just tell me. But don't let little kids pray for me because what, what can they do? And he says, just wait, just see. And these little kids came and they laid hands on this lady and prayed for her. And God touched her right there. She got up. And she started walking around. She started cleaning the house and cooking for them a meal. So these little kids, when, when they have an encounter with God, the Spirit of God begins to indwell them. And they don't have a little Holy Spirit. 
They have the Spirit of God that hovered over the face of the deep when all things came into being. It was by the power of that very same Spirit. And this is the kind of God that, we, that I know. The, guy, the God that I grew up knowing was not a God that I would want to give my life for. I didn't know Him. I just knew about Him. But when you have an encounter with Him, and I want to tell you a little bit about what this God really values. Imagine you're a king, and you have a kingdom, and, and, and your kingdom extends as far as your rule go, and you have certain rules, certain commands that you want your subjects to obey. Well, this is what, what our God considers great in His kingdom. And in Matthew 22, verse 36, a teacher of the law asked Jesus, you know, teacher, tell us, what is the, what is the great commandment of the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And in Luke 12, Mark 12, verse 30, it adds, and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, this says so much about who God is. Imagine you are the God that created the universe, that spoke all things into existence, and the thing that you value most is love. God actually says in, in 1 John 4, 16, we love because He first loved us. God defines Himself by saying, God is love. 1 John 4, 18 says, the perfect love of God casts out all fear. This kind of love is not a common love. This kind of love is a selfless love. And, and when, when, when you become loved with this kind of love, it transforms you because you know what? You were created for this very purpose. Revelations 4.11 in the King James Version says that we were created for thy pleasure. God created us because love needs expression. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had this amazing love that they shared amongst each other. But love isn't love until you can give it away. It needs greater expression. So God created us in His image, gave us the, the capacity to receive His kind of love. Not only to receive it, but to reciprocate that love back to Him that satisfies the heart of God. God made us powerful. We have the ability to receive the fullness of His love, and we are able to love Him in return with that kind of love. This is the God that, that I discovered, that I met, and this is the God that we introduce people to. And when people experience this kind of God, where they receive the fullness of His love, it transforms their lives. And they are the future of tomorrow in Zambia. You know, Zambia is a Christian country. It's got a Christian constitution. I think it's, it's one of the only countries in Africa that has a Christian constitution. But do you know that most of the churches are just religious? Everyone goes to church on a Sunday. At a school, every classroom of the school is having a different service at the same time. There are hundreds of churches. But on a Monday to a Saturday, you can't tell the difference, who's Christian and who are not, because they have a form of godliness, but they've denied its power. They don't know God. But when they are introduced into a God that is real, I believe that's what the Asbury Revival is all about. They get a touch of God, like, like He touched me, that put me into a, a revival. I've been through many revivals in my life. I'm in revival right now where I'm, I'm experiencing the love of God, and I'm growing in that. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, like the Word of God is like a mirror. And as we look intently into this mirror of God's Word, we are being transformed from one degree of glory to another. You know, this is what God intends for us. You know, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 14 says, and this is the purpose of the gospel, that you may share in the glory of God. When I read that the first time, I thought, this can't be correct. I read different translations, yeah? The glory of God. And then I read John, 4, John 17, from verse 22, where Jesus said, Father, he was praying in front of the disciples the night of his betrayal. And he says, Father, the glory that you have given me, 
the glory that we have shared in the beginning, I have given it to them that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them and you and me. And in verse 26 of John 17, he says, Father, I will make your love known to them that the world may know that you love them as you love me. Jesus came to put a face on the Father. And I'm telling you, people reject God because they don't see him as he is. One day, everyone will come before the judgment seat of God and they will see God as he is and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are God and I deserve whatever punishment comes my way because I rejected this, I rejected you. And so people only reject God because they haven't seen him. But when you see him, Jesus was an exact representation of the Father's nature. And he, is, he has filled us. We are complete in him. So when we discover the God that he is and we allow him, we receive his love. That transforms us. You know, anger, frustration, anxiety, all those things stem from fear. And the perfect love of God casts out all fear. So when you struggle with any of these things that you have not yet received the fullness of God, but God has given us His Holy Spirit. Romans 5 verse 5 says that the Holy Spirit is the one that shows us the love of the Father. He's the one that imparts for the Father's love into our hearts. And this is, this is what we are, this is what we need. Because imagine if you can see what God sees when He looks at you. And that is, that is my prayer for every one of you. You know, that you would begin to ask God, Lord, I want to be transformed. I want people to look at me and see all that is good about you. The Word of God says, if Christ be lifted up in us, He will draw all men unto Himself. So these kids have been transformed because they dared to believe the value that they have, and God revealed His love to them, and that transformed them. You know, transformation, according to Romans 12, verse 2, is about the renewal of our mind. We are born with a perspective. We don't see the reality of who God is. We have been conformed to the pattern of this world, but we need to be transformed by the renewal of our mind, and the renewal of our mind comes when we are being washed with water of the Word of God, when we believe the Word of God that is not just true for others, but that is true for me, that God is saying these things about me. And when we see God as He is, that's when He transforms us. 1 John 4, 17 says, As Jesus is, as He is, so are we in this world. Well, that is true about who we are spiritually, but our soul has to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. So this is the message. I just gave you a bit of a taste of the message that we are preaching in Zambia. And this is the message that is transforming people's lives. And so, if you want to be part of this, then you're welcome. We'll, we'll give you little papers where you can receive a newsletter that we send out um, once, a, once a month. My wife is great in writing um, newsletters and giving feedback with pictures about all the work that we do and all the things that God is doing through us. But, but my heart is really, guys, more than anything, is that I want you to taste and see that the Lord is so good and that He can transform your life in the same way that He has transformed our lives and the lives of those children that you've seen. Arthur, I'm going to ask you to hang out here for a minute because I want you to pray for our congregation I hope that you've seen uh, what I saw when I, I met this couple, um, because God is doing something new. He's, he's at work all over the world in ways that we, we're not aware of, but when we become aware of what he's doing, um, he is binding our hearts together and, and orchestrating some things that we can be doing. And, and uh, selfishly, I came away from that coffee with your wife thinking, wow, if we can have the same impact in our children's lives that you're doing there, because her, her, her mantra is that we, we give the kids not just Bible stories, but we give them the meat of God's word. Amen. And then we help them to experience the presence of God, the yeah. manifest presence of God. Yeah. Have an encounter with God regularly, regularly. And then we equip them and train them 
to, to go out. They're not too young. It's not an age thing. It's God is calling us and he's equipping us to go out and to lay hands on them to heal and to talk to people and bring them to faith in Christ Jesus. If we can have that impact with our kids, yeah. that, wow, that's yeah. what God's wanting to do. Yeah. And so I, I want to ask you to pray for us, but we're also going to pray for you and for the ministry you're doing. Um, he's going to be available on the portico afterwards. As you know around here, and I'll say it again, that we say all the time that churches don't do ministry. People do ministry. And I, I want to parade before us um, those who are doing ministry so that there might be a, a dozen of folks in our congregation who say, that's what I want to attach to. And then when you hear from Kenya or from South Sudan or from, from South uh, uh, East uh, India, uh, Asia or South America or Germany, all the different ministries that we have going on, there might be a dozen people who say, I'll do that or I'll do that. And this way we can all do so much more than, than I can do or you can do by ourselves. So would you pray for us? Yeah. And then I will pray for you. Thank you. Yes, Father, my, my heart's prayer is that you would reveal yourself to everyone in this room in the same way that you revealed yourself to me, Lord. I pray that you would create a hunger in every heart here to really know you, to know you intimately, Lord God, and to know and have a revelation of just how much you love them. Father, I pray that every person here will see through your eyes themselves, that they will see what you see when you look at them, Lord God, and that they may see you as you truly are, the amazing, loving Father that you are. I pray for that encounter in every single person here, Lord God, that our lives will be transformed as our minds become renewed and we see you according to truth in jesus name amen father we pray for overland missions we pray for the work of kids on fire we pray for what the pnrs and their teams are doing and we pray for these 80 missionary couples that arthur is is discipling and mentoring and encouraging as they are doing their works of ministry father in the earth in these days we pray that the glory of God will be manifest from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. The name of the Lord shall be praised. Amen. So, Father, fully resource the work that you have called them to. Fully resource the work you've called us to, that together we can, we can make our lives count because of the one that it, it counts and matters most to. Help us to see ourselves the way that you see us, Lord. And may Arthur and Liesl and their family and their ministry see themselves the way that you see them. Father, thank you that we can pray this. And I also, just, it's on my heart right now that there is somebody having a, an epiphany in this moment right now. Somebody in this room or somebody online who has never, never seen themselves this way before. But they now have a faith. There's a trust. They believe this. And for whoever that is, I, I just ask that you just turn and say the name Jesus. Turn to God and say, Jesus, I want Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself not only in your glory, but also in your salvation, that they, you would draw these persons who, who this resonates with. Draw them to Christ right now. And if there's sins, wash them clean. If there is a lack of purpose and direction, give them that purpose and direction that you have for all of us. Father, thank you so much for hearing our hearts cry as we cry out to you. Now seal us by your Holy Spirit and put us into work so that we can glorify your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Take the broken thing.
First, I just want to thank Arthur once again. Um, Arthur, your family has been talking about you for years. Probably close to a decade ago, Sira and Richard were telling me and my husband all about you. And so we're grateful to meet you and to have you here and to talk to you in the portico after the service. Um, Grace family, we have partners in ministry starting tonight. This is an exciting time for you to, if you haven't done this before, to team up with us to learn more about Grace, to learn how we operate, what we believe, meet the staff, discover your own unique gifts and passions that God has given you. And so we start this series off today for four Sundays from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, so we really encourage you to just drop in or to contact Lorette or link on the screen uh, with the QR code. 
this Wednesday, we won't be having Wednesdays at Grace. Um, so there won't be any children's programming or dinner this week. Uh, programming will resume next week. And last but not least, Overcomers Outreach is a ministry to those struggling with any kind of addiction, substance, dependency on a relationship, or really anything that steals your time away from things that are important. Really, just about everyone falls into some of these categories. Um, Overcomers Outreach will start meeting on Mondays from 6 to 7.30 p.m. in room A112. Um, Please contact Dan or Allison McLean. The email's on the screen. Have a great week. And Pastor Rick, will you come back up for the benediction? Thank you, Monica. Why don't you stand to your feet and receive the benediction. It's a Latin word that means the good word that God has for you. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Have a great week.